If you are coming from other popular languages such as PHP or JavaScript, you are familiar with using a variable to keep track of your current index, uh, as is shown in example right here. It is critical to understand that these four loops uh, uh, do not actually iterate over the array, they manually iterate via an expression that serves as a proxy for referen referencing each array value. In the example, i has no explicit relation to scores. It simply happens to coincide with each necessary index value. The traditional for loop as shown in before example in JavaScript does not exist in Python. However, if you, like me, your first instinct is to find a way to recreate what you're comfortable with. As a result, you may have discovered the range function and come up with the something like this. Yep. And the problem with this for loop is that it isn't very Pythonic. We are not actually iterating over the list itself, but rather we are using i as a proxy index. Let's see. And uh, in fact, even in JavaScript, the, there are methods of directly iterating over arrays. It's uh, for each and for of. If you want to properly keep track of the index value in a Python for loop, the answer is to make use the enumerate function like this, and uh, uh, which will count over and iterable. And yes, you can use it for other data types like strings, tuples, and dictionaries. And the function takes two arguments, the iterable and starting position. You can say 0, 1, 2, or leave it as uh, nothing. And uh, then the function will return the tuples with each current count and respective value in the iterable. And let's see it. Okay, we have. 10, 44, 78, 54, and 22, and 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, this code is much cleaner. We avoid dealing with list indicators, iterate over the actual values, and explicitly see each value in the for loops definition. And uh, here's a bonus you have ever wanted to print a number at list but had to print i, I plus 1. Uh, since the first index is 0, simply pass the value 1 to enumerate and watch the magic. And let's do it. We did it. Okay, now it starts from 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. That's really fine and uh, it's working. Okay, uh, one more second. And at the end of this video, I just uh, quick comparison of the good and bad way and as you can see in good way we using enumerate function and in bad way we use a range and as you can see uh, while using enumerate the code is more readable more flexible and more user friendly why uh, while we when we use a range it's more difficult to read and uh, it's less flexible to, uh, about indexing uh, our uh, Primic Walrus. So, that's all, and see you. Bye-bye.